Hey everyone, at the front of this video I wanted to include a short and quick little announcement because I'm very, very excited about this. NomCon! NomCon is happening June 13th, 2020, this Saturday. That'll be live on Twitch TV slash NomSec. Ben from HackerOne is going to be putting this event on along with myself, Stoke, and the Cyber Mentor. There'll be seven hours of talks, and Sunday is dedicated to three different workshops, so you can find out the whole talk schedule and everything online at nomcon.com. And along with that, I'm going to be hosting the Capture the Flag competition. The Capture the Flag competition starts the day before, just June 12th, that Friday, and it'll go until about the time for my talk at the very end of the actual conference on Saturday. So registration is finally open and live. If you want to go check that out, you can go to ctf.nomcon.com. That is HTTPS, because I know a lot of people got angry at me when I posted VersetCon uh, without it. But please, please, please go register. It's going to be a 31-hour competition. If you enjoyed VersetCon, this game will be even bigger and even better. So please go sign up. It's going to be a blast, and I'm really, really excited about it, and I hope that you are too. So please go check it out, ctf.nomcon.com, and enjoy the video. I'll see you guys there next week. Only seven days till the game. Hello everyone, my name is John Hammond and welcome back to another Try Hack Me YouTube video. In this case, I want to be showcasing the Tom Ghost Room, which demonstrates the Ghost Cat vulnerability. Uh, very, very recent in terms of some Tom Cat web servers. So let's hop on over to my screen. I'll show you the room here. Uh, I've got it open and I am joined the room. I've deployed the machine here. The only prompt that we have for all of these is compromise this machine and obtain user.txt and then escalate privileges and obtain root.txt. So looks like we're just kind of on our own, not usually the guided process that uh, TryHackMe typically offers for us. So I have this machine here. Uh, I'll go ahead and create a directory for this. So let's make directory Tom Ghost. Let's hop in there and I will create a readme directory or a file anyway, so I could keep track of some of our notes here. And with that, I will keep track of the IP address as a variable so I can just spit that into a lot of different shells and don't have to retype it all the time. Um, create all these tasks here. Uh, let's actually create a section for our nmap scan, which we can go ahead and fire off. Ideally, hopefully, hopefully the machine is up and all the ports are accessible. Uh, if not, I'll just pause the video and we'll keep waiting, but I have been able to ping it. Oh, and I need to go ahead and create that nmap directory. There we go. But I mean, as you can see, I've, I've here, I'll ping the IP address. He seems to be up. So Hopefully that nmap scan will return some good stuff for us. But anyway, let's go try to see if it has a web server. Uh, I entered my export command into my URL bar, so that wasn't very, very helpful. Okay, he still needs a little bit of time to get his, his web server up. So I'll pause the video and we'll get back to it once that's ready. Okay, so it's been a few minutes and my nmap scan actually returned. Looks like we have port 22 open, 53 and 8009, as well as 8080. So the 8080 must be Tomcat. Looks like there actually wasn't anything on 80 itself. So that page would never have loaded for me regardless. Uh, Apache Tomcat, one of the later versions. Uh, this one should still be susceptible to Ghostcat, this recent vulnerability. Let me go ahead and do some Googling on that. Let's check out Ghostcat, see what it really is. Um, if you want to do a little bit more in-depth reading, here you certainly can. There is a lot of articles about it on this new recent vulnerability, 2020. Looks like it came out in March. AJP protocol, Apache JSER protocol, binary protocol used to, in the Apache Tomcat web servers, messaging communication with the server and servlets. I won't go deep in the weeds on really everything that this contains. Uh, I'd rather just go ahead and exploit it. So uh, the notion here, though, is that this can quickly become a venue and outlet for remote code execution so we can turn in and get control of the box. I actually have an interesting tweet here. Uh, if you upload files and those are saved in an accessible spot, those could be turned into remote code execution. Um, I believe we don't do that in this specifically, in, in the ghost cat room. Let's see what we do, though. So I'm going to just simply Google the ghost cat GitHub exploits or ghost, etc., etc., ghost cat exploit GitHub, whatever you want to track down. Uh, I see a cool one from Volhub. I see some verification one. I've had a lot of success with the zero zero the way 
But again, it's certainly useful and willing to go check out some of these. It looks like this one also does a similar technique as uh, what the others do. The verification one I haven't checked out though. That looks like it might just try to determine if it is vulnerable, but not actually exploit it. This one, AJP Shooter from Zero Zero The Way looks to work very, very well and kind of from my testing prior. So let's go ahead and download this. I'll git clone it. I will git clone this. Checking out the usage here. It showcases our arguments that we can supply, URL, the port, whether or not we want to read or evaluate something, and what we might be looking for. So the web INF or web.xml file in Tomcat and in AGP for what we're working with might very well have some useful information on users and other other like system configuration files. So let's go go ahead and try that. Uh, that's in the ghostcat directory now. If I were to run Python AGP shooter, it looks like it needs all of the arguments that we would supply. So URL for one thing, AGP port, and you can see in their screenshots, they showcase some good examples here. So I'll fire this up. 8080 is for the actual um, Tomcat itself. And you can see that again in our example here. The AJP server is on 8009. And what we want to read, webinf, web.xml, and read. So 8009, webinf, web.xml, read. That triggers it and fires it away. Looks like it says, welcome to Ghostcat and potentially some credentials here with this Skyfuck user and that. So that read that web.xml file for us and now we've got that useful information. Uh, I'm just gonna copy this and slap it into our notes. Exploiting Ghostcat. So we have this user, Skyfuck. Okay, so SSH is open so we could potentially SSH with that to the IP address. Go ahead and do that. We'll grab his password in here. A-OK. -okay. All right, so what do we have in here? Looks like we have a credential.pgp and a tryhackme.asc file. So these are some GNU Privacy Guard or pretty good privacy uh, files that are encrypted. So we could go ahead and work with these. I'm gonna go ahead and download them. So let's SCP to skyfuck at that IP address, and let's grab everything in their home directory and move it into this here. It's gonna ask for that password, which we should still have in our clipboard, so I can just paste that in, and now we're downloading these. So this ASC file, let's take a look at these. Let me file these open. The ASC file has some particular information here. If I check this out, it is a private key block, so we might need to crack this. We can thankfully do this with John the Ripper. So let's start that process. The GPG file, that's the straight up encrypted one. So we're gonna to need to use that with kind of the key that we could potentially get out of the ASC file. Let's go. Let's use some opt John the Ripper run GPG to John on our try hack me. And then we can go ahead and give that to a file hashes for John. And now let's run that John the Ripper utility on that hashes for John file and we'll use our word list uh, rocku.txt, which I have in my opt directory because that's where I put a lot of my tools and stuff. Looks like it can crunk, crank, crush through this. Other words, um, I don't know if I need to supply a format or it'll figure it out. So I'm gonna stand by and see if it actually cracks anything. Okay, as that was rolling through, I realized I probably had that uh, argument set up in the wrong way. I should use the word list before I specify the actual hashes that I want to use because that way it won't get confused on what hashes it might be looking at. So word list rocku.txt. Now when that's cranking through it, awesome, it finds the password. So that should be gpg import that try hack me ASC file and using the password that we just had it cracked, we should be able to go ahead and actually enter that. Alexandru was what we used. That's been imported successfully. Now I should be able to gpg tag tag decrypt our credential.pgp. There we go. Okay, so Merlin now is an account that we can access and we have a successful password for that. So let's go ahead and I guess take note of that and try and SSH with that guy. So let's break out of that sky command and let's move into Merlin. Supply that password 
And now we have a new user that we can log in as. We have user.txt, there we go, there's our flag. I accidentally pasted the password into the prompt, whatever. <laughs> let's go ahead and paste that guy in. And now let's start to try and enumerate, see how we can privesc. Uh, checking just simple sudo entries, looks like what commands can we run as Merlin with sudo privileges? We can run no password user bin zip, which is pretty great because that's totally gotta be something in GTFO bins. So let's go check out what can we do with zip. Should be able to go ahead and get a shell. So zip, go ahead and run something with getting a shell and it needs a temporary directory, so whatever. Let's just try to spin that up. There we go. Entering those commands, we simply have our flag as root. You can see our prompt here, we have our hashtag, so we are in fact root. If I check out my directory, I moved us into the root directory. ID, who am I? We are in fact root. So let's check out that root.txt file. Super easy privesque to go ahead and steal that root.txt file. Okay. That was that room, um, a little bit of a stumbling block, I, at least in my case, because GPG, I guess I don't know why I was being stupid and didn't even bother with the keys on that, but that's how you can do that. If you have that ASC file, you can import that, get the cracked password if, if you can tr determine that and go ahead and decrypt anything that was used with that. So ghost cat, right? That's the vulnerability. That was the kind of exploit. And uh, I think that that reference there is, is actually really, really cool. Looking through these, AJP shooters seem to be pretty effective in my case. Uh, I guess I'd have to take a look at some of these other tools and utilities to do some damage with that recent Tomcat vulnerability. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press that like button. Uh, if you didn't, I don't know what to tell you. Sorry. Maybe next time. Like, what do you want me to say? <laughs> okay. Thanks for watching. Love to see you guys in Discord server. There's a link in the description. Please do comment. Please do subscribe. Please do check it out on Patreon, PayPal. I appreciate any of your support. I'm so, so grateful for you guys. It's just surreal. So, thanks for everything. Take care. I'm going to end the video now. This is weird. Goodbye. Oh, 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 oh,